Hey everybody, it's your Sam and I'm here with another video. We're going to see if this works because I'm having some technical issues with connecting my camera to StreamYard again. So hopefully I can get it solved today so that there will be a live stream. I wanted to do the first video in this collaboration, the things that you know as an author or what you know as an author about blank. This one is going to be all about my ancient vampires, werewolves, and all that. It's the epic. This series is going to be about 11 books long and you can imagine the amount of research that I have already done and have yet to do because of all of these characters and all of these books. This series is going to be called The Children of Cain and yes it is the Cain and Abel of lore. Granted this might seem similar to Vampire the Masquerade but it's different. <laughs> I promise. That was one thing I had to study up on to make sure that I wasn't copying anything. So I know a little bit about Vampire the Masquerade and yeah that study session was a few hours long needless to say. I kind of wanted to do a game playthrough with that but I didn't. It's okay. Some other things that I know because of this epic and I'm going to mainly focus on Mist for right now because Mist is out on Ream and some of you have read it or heard me talk about it. For Mist, I did about 10 extra hours of research, maybe 6 to 10, somewhere around in there. I'm terrible at documenting time when it comes to research things because sometimes I go down a rabbit hole and I lose track of time. Other times it's I get an idea spark and I run over to write all of a sudden. Time is difficult. <laughs> the characters that these particular subjects belong to are my vampires. The other thing is kind of tying all of them together that you'll see later on. The thing I learned with Mist the most is a little bit more folklore, a little bit more history, a little bit more mythos, especially concerning my mountain home. Granted, I grew up with some of these stories, but I didn't really delve into them as much and I didn't know as much. It was just mentioning some of these things. And one of those things is the Moon-Eyed people. For those of you that don't know who the Moon-Eyed people were, if they even existed, they are a small, often depicted as humanoids that have very large white eyes. They were very pale. Some of them had white hair while others say that they had black hair. Some people say that they weren't pale at all but were tan. Some of the documentation on the Moon-Eyed people People say that they were another indigenous people's tribe. But if you follow the documentation in the history that is with the Cherokee, you know that that is not necessarily true according to their history. The moon Eyed people are no longer. If they are, they have been hiding very, very well for a hundred years if not more. <laughs> According to Cherokee lore, the Cherokee basically ran them out or the Moon-Eyed people disappeared. Now, you know the Cherokee as well as I do. You know that the Cherokee were a very 
peaceful people. So for them to run out the moon eyed people, it had to be something relatively scary or dangerous to them. But the moon eyed people have been known to create some things in the small or around the small town of Murphy and Robbinsville and the area therein a little bit down into Georgia as well and some of these are walls one of those walls was used in the fort that was in Murphy I'll leave a couple of links down below if you're interested in researching the moon odd people more but yeah the more I read about the moon odd people the more I learn and I could technically maybe be kind of an expert on them. I don't know. Like I said, some of the documents and some of the history on them don't work well with one another. Most of it is just guesstimation, as is a lot of history. Another thing that I have studied for MIST is the Dubuque. I'm probably butchering that word. The Dubuque is known in folklore, a lot of Jewish folklore, because my characters are children of Cain, so it's a lot of things around that area are in my books. And the Dibuk is, or Dibukim, I guess you could say for multiples of them, but a lot of the stories say that they are human souls that have been disassociated from the body and then they become malevolent spirits and they want to possess a living person again. I've put a little bit of a twist on this folklore and I have made the, the book more of a they are an angry spirit. They are they are the soul of a human that has soaked up hatred surrounding them. Hatred and anger and those negative feelings that come with racism and things like that. That is the book in mists. It is a human spirit still. It is disassociated from a human body and it is desirous of another human body to inhabit so that it can act upon all this hatred and rage that it has soaked up. So that's the, the book that I have researched. And again, I'll leave a couple of links down below in the description box if you desire to know a little bit more about the Dabuka. Another thing with mist is of course the angels and demons and the history, often biblical, that goes with those. In Mist, you will meet a couple of offspring of demons and you will meet Asmodeus, which is often depicted as the demon of lust. He's a little bit different in my epic. Demons and angels in and of themselves are different. They are going to be twisted around and changed a little bit. So Mist and the Children of Cain novels are going to have tons of angels and demons. Mist in and of itself mentions Asbadeus. There is a character in it called Akihiko, which is the son of Seriu, which is the daughter of Nadia and Lucifer. And Nadia and Lucifer are basically gods right and left hand or the creator's right and left hand. They are the ones that control earth as we know it. Asmodeus is considered a demon in most folklore and mythos and history texts if you believe that the Bible is an actual history text. That's that's your thing. Some things I believe in the Bible and other things I believe humans have destroyed and twisted in the way that they want to portray the creator. That's just me. And you'll see <laughs> a lot of those beliefs in mists and the rest of the epic. Needless to say, I have done a lot of research on religion. A good portion of these books right here and right here and even a few right in here are religious based. A lot of religious texts and they're not all here. There's a lot that I have in the storage building which is behind the camera and outside. I'm not going to leave links to my research 
for angels and demons and things like that because that would fill up the whole box. It really would. A lot of this is easily accessible through a Google search or a EBSCO EBSCO search if you have signed up for that. The study of religions are, is a very interesting thing and that ties into another thing that I kind of want to talk about in this video so that it will carry on into the next videos a little bit but I will give you a little bit of a forewarning here. I am fixing to talk about blood. If you do not want to listen to that, then you can end your watch time here. Another thing that I have studied is about blood and blood substitutes and whether or not some people believe in transfusions or the use of blood or the spilling of blood at all. This has been an ongoing research topic because a lot of our medical procedures and things that we find out that we can use change through time. I have vampires in this epic. I have vampires in mists. They take on things that aren't blood. So what is a blood substitute that my vampires partake in? Granted, these vampires are ancient, so a lot of their bodily systems have healed enough from the curse in order to be kind of human, a very supernatural, a very powerful human body. So what do they use? A lot of them eat a lot of eggs because eggs are protein, eggs are life, eggs act like blood. I don't know if y'all can hear her, but Kona is snoring, so that should, you know, make you grin a little bit. Another thing that they use is systems that break apart the blood, and that is kind of a sequestratio therapy where there's a lot of centrifuge, there's a lot of picking and choosing what they want to use, and during some of the plagues and diseases and times of fear for partaking in blood. My vampires have chosen to break apart the blood as best as they can through mostly the use of centrifuge and have drank the safe parts, so to speak. Another thing that they use if they keep humans, that's another thing I had to study, is in the countries that my vampires live in, what are the laws on kidnapping and keeping people <laughs> and the, the consequences therein. So that's another thing that I had to study for, not particularly myths, but for the epic is the laws pertaining to the technically imprisonment of humans. That was that was very interesting and I probably came up on some kind of list for the FBI. Sorry guys and ladies if you're having to watch all my getting back on track here. If they keep humans there is a drug there is a drug that you can use that helps produce more blood and it is called I'm going to butcher this because I have always butchered this word erythropoietin or EPO for short and for those that cannot pronounce it like moi but that if you give it to a human body or even an animal body in some aspects it will help the body produce more blood. Stimulates blood production, I should say. Other things are the different proteins that you can take that stimulate the proteins in blood, such as Rogram and al albumin. Some of this stuff I learned as a pharmacy tech and some of this stuff I learned as when I studied to become a EMT basic 
which I didn't follow through with at all <laughs> because I don't like people that much. I was more interested in animals at the time and I went off to college to do animal behavior. Anyway, that's a different topic. Proteins, the centrifuges and stuff like that, I learned a lot during my time as a pharmacy tech and studying upon medical things. But most of my study on medical things has been because of the epic, including some of my other stories, even short stories like His Angel. I believe you can read that on Reem as well in the short story collection, His Angel. That's just some of the research that I've done for the epic, the Children of Cain novels, including Myths, which you can read on Reem, and the link for that is going to be down below as well. Thank you for watching. If you are interested in doing this collaboration with us, the things that you know as an author, the things that you know about blank because you are an author, feel free to fill out the form below or just hit me up on the DMs. My social medias are down below as well and if you have any questions I will gladly answer them if you want to just jump in make sure to at least link me to the video or the live stream or the short that you do that is regarding this collaboration so I can add it to the playlist and you can get more views maybe hopefully again thank you very much be kind to one another out there be kind to yourself Keep writing, keep being creative, and I will see you next time.